At this time, I would like to have the two-time heavyweight world title challenger, Chris the Nightmare Areola, with a record of 36-4-1, with 31 knockouts, to please say a few words via his training camp uh, in California on what he plans to bring to the table and what we can expect to see from him on July 16th. I'm, I'm very employed right now. I'm uh, grateful for this uh, opportunity from Deontay, man. First of all, I like don't say, believe I don't deserve this uh, kind of shot just like he did. And um, I gotta make the best out of this, man. Um, I'm the underdog, and I should be the underdog. You know, Deontay has, uh, has done what he's supposed to do as a champion. He's defended his title, he's beat fighters that he's supposed to, and uh, I was one of those guys out there talked a lot of crap saying that he didn't deserve that title. And you know what? Um, he proved me and he proved a lot of reporters and a lot of people wrong. And um, that's why I gotta come ready for him. I gotta come ready for the best young to all possible. Chris, you've previously challenged for the world title twice before. Will you approach this fight any differently than you did those previous two? Absolutely, man. I have to approach this fight a whole lot different because um, in this fight, I really have nothing to lose. I have everything to gain. Um, Deontay has a lot to lose. And uh, um, I know that he's going to come beat me all the better because, uh, man, he knows the kind of fighter I am. I'm going to come, I'm going to come give him my all. And uh, Deontay, Deontay is, uh, is a tough SOB, man. And uh, I have to be prepared. I have to be ready for that right hand. I got to be ready for that jab. And, uh, and um, be careful at all times. All right, how did you earn that nickname, The, the Nightmare? <laughs> uh, I got that nickname had to do with the haircut. I used to have a lot of pimples back in the days. And I got a messed up haircut, and I went home, I shaved my head, and my friend Sidney goes, man, you look like Freddy Krueger. That's just the evolution of the game from like Freddy Krueger to Krueger and now the nightmares. So I have nothing to do with boxing, has everything to do with my handsome looks. <laughs> Are you ready to? compete for the title in a crowd that's going to be very pro Deontay. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm a driver now. And, and honestly, you know, um, I love boxing. I love boxing fans. Whether they're with me or against me, um, they give energy to the crowd. They give, they give energy to the fighters. And uh, at the end of the day, it's just going to be me and Deontay in the ring. Um, there's nobody that's going to be able to help him. There's nobody that's going to be able to help me. And uh, that's what I love about the sport of boxing. It's the most gentleman sport that there is. You know, there's be a lot of uh, crap talking, a lot of shit talking, stuff like that. But the other day, it's going to be one on one, mano a mano. And um, after the fight's over, just shake hands like nothing happened. Chris is going to see. At Birmingham is a fantastic place. He's going to be treated extremely well by the people here with the event. It's going to be a first-class promotion all the way around. And Deontay Wilder is the reason all this is happening, because he is the heavyweight champion of the world. He is the guy that wants to fight every three or four months. He'd fight every week if you'd let him. This is the guy that wants to be the most active heavyweight champion in history, and he's well on his way to doing just that. So I've said enough. I'm bringing the man to the stage right now. Give it up for the heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder. All the short people didn't talk. I got to adjust the mic. <laughs> How y'all guys doing today? Man, I'm just, I'm super excited about these times right here. Um, yeah, it's, it's sad to keep bringing it up, but uh, of course, so I'll just shorten it with, you know, of course, everybody know what, what happened. Um, come my last fight, you know, I was super prepared, ready. I took my body through everything it could actually go through, you know. Um, actually, for the first time in my life, I, you know, I look gooder than I ever looked in my whole career with that, uh, with that last camp. Even traveling to a whole other country and, and continuing our training, I was, a, I was a different fighter. I was a different Deontay, a different monster, you know. I, I even felt it inside of me, you know, where everything that I did and to go so far to come empty handed, it took a lot out of me. It took, it took a lot out of me. Uh, first time in my career that I went home and did, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to. I didn't want. I barely wanted to do interviews. 
I would, we, like, like Jay said, we was on the verge of depression. And, you know, I never thought I'd feel it in my career, you know, because I, I, I would think that when we go places, uh, we, we set a date for a fight that the fighters are, are ready to fight. And um, with, with fair grounds, you know, not, not to go somewhere then the week of the fight, find out somebody trying to cheat, you know, being in their own country because he already knew what, what I was doing. I was coming to his backyard to, to do this some damage, to represent not only me, myself, but to represent my country as well too, you know. But things happen, this is boxing, it's a business. And um, you know, the saying is, when one door closed, God allowed another one to open it. <laughs> and it was a prime example of when a door closed, he opened them. And we opened it. this opportunity for me, opened it wide because there's so much other things are going on, man. It's just, we just have to stay still. And I understand being patient, I understand having the virtue of patience, but I've been patient all my life. I've been, even up to this point, this, I'm not an overnight success, you know what I mean? I'm not, <laughs> this, I'm not a lucky guy. I don't even believe in luck. Of course, we say good luck because that's a human thing, but I, I mean, I'm the point, I'm the type of guy that I believe you go do it or you not. It's not no in between. Luck is in between. Luck is something like, he may win, he may not. He may do something, he may not. And I just don't believe in love, you know? I believe in speaking in existence and letting God do God's will and, and work. And, and if it's your time, it'll happen. If it's not, then you just gotta stay patient. As you see Chris Arioli, he stayed patient. People wondering why he continued to continue to continue to get title fights, title matches, you know? It's just his times, you know what I mean? Some some guys gonna be able to get chances after chances after chances, some not, you know? But you can't deny him, you can't look past him, you know? When we, when we with the circumstances that, that we was facing, to come back and do a, a, a definitely, this is what we call a, a short notice fight, even short notice for me, but I'm, you know, this is nothing new to me. But for us looking for opponents, we knew we needed the right person for this one. You, you, this, 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 this opponent that we was looking for, this couldn't just be a, a, a normal average fighter. You know what I mean? We had many names, we had a couple of names, we even had some at the top, top five list, but I don't think they would have been ready. A, a placement of a number that, that place you in some kind of category don't define the person that you are. It's just a number at the end of the day to me. But we needed, a, we needed a fighter that would fit the description of a short notice that's gonna fight with his heart and give it his all, that's, 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 that's worldwide known, and that's gonna come on a short notice, that was gonna accept the fight on a short notice. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Chris Arriola. You know, we knew that he, was, he would be a perfect guy for this, this opportunity. I don't think there's no other guy that would have been perfect for this situation. For, for to come to Birmingham, which, man, I, I take my hats off to you guys. I, I applaud you guys, especially the Bruno event team. You know, we love work, working with you guys. You know, when we first built the relationship with you guys way back at the Porto Arena, it was a fantastic moment for me. I still think about that because the people of this state won't let it go. And each and every time we add history on top. And with this fight, even more like this, people have been waiting for this, just to have another fight here. You know, it's just, it's crazy how you plant a seed and you watch the fire grow and now it's blooming. People are hungry for boxing here. You know, they, they won't let it, they, they, they're excited. It's like, if you miss the first one, they told somebody about it. The ones that missed the first one came to the second one. And those that missed the second one coming to this one. This is going to be sold out. This is going to be such a sold out pack show. It's going to be unbelievable. I can't wait. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We've been in camp. Like Jay said, I'm never out of shape. You know, I'm just adding on to it. I'm, my body's tired right now. I'm tired. but. I, this is what I love to do. 
And when you love to do something, it's really not a job, is it, when you love to do it? So this is what I dedicate my life to. This is what, I, what I'm, I'm trained to do. And I think this is what I was born to do. And to be coming back to Birmingham, fighting the Legacy Arena means a, a lot to me, man. I, I consider these my stomping grounds when it comes to Alabama, for sure. They never let us down. They always tried their best. And they competed against a lot of the best that, that, that wanted the shows. And they came through on top. So as a representative and a native of Alabama, I'm going to come through on top as well, too. This is going to be an awesome, an awesome fight. It's been a long time coming for me and Chris. And I can't wait. I can't wait for this fight. I'm glad that it's coming to Birmingham as well, too, to make more history. You know, each fight is a build-up for, for, for this state as far as it's dealing with boxing. You know, we didn't have a lot of great warriors. And, Trust me, we're not going to bring no opponent here that we know is not going to give it their best and going to give it their heart. When we first had Eric Molina here and the Jean Duopas, we told you guys that it was going to be a great fight. And when the fight happened, it was a great fight. We didn't stir you wrong. We're not going to do that. And from that point on, those guys went on to be successful guys being in the top and one of them becoming a, a civil, um, WBC civil champion. When people, you know, degraded him and called them names that they didn't deserve to be called. And here again, we present to you Chris Ariola versus Deontay Wilder. Another great fight that's here that's gonna be in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. And don't be one of the people that say what happened when you had the opportunity to be there to witness it. You got your chance now. These tickets are going to go fast. I promise you that. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of history. I'm happy to be a native of Alabama. I represent you guys shit, since the beginning of me, you know, and I still do it now. So many people still try to draw me away from here. But my heart is here, and it's going to stay here. I'm just looking forward to the fight, guys. I can't wait to perform for my, 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 my state. Because I tell people all the time, I don't just represent my city. I represent the whole state of Alabama. So everywhere I go, it's my home, as far as when they're dealing with Alabama. And uh, I can't wait, guys. Thank you. All right, before we break up for questions, Champ, if you would, we're going to do the, sh the stare down. Um, <laughs> with Chris, uh, I don't know if the best way is to walk around or if you want to do it from up here, but we got to, and cameras, you can come forward if you want to get some video of the Skype stare down. So, Skype stare down. One, one more thing I like to, and I like to thank, I like to thank you, Chris, for, for accepting the opportunity on this short notice. And um, like I said before, the description that I described about you, you know, you was the only guy that was, that can fit the description to have a short notice and come to fight. We know you gonna, you bring your heart each and every fight. And no other guy in the world would, you know, we, we fit with, thought would be best, but you, but you, you know. So we appreciate you so much for uh, accepting it. And um, when you get here, you're gonna definitely see uh, Southern hospitality and um, a warm welcome. All right, Chris, I don't know if you can see Deontay now, but he's to your right. So uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, we got the cameras up front, and uh, we've got the, the stare down. It's better when it's chest to chest, but he's, he's across the country in L.A. right now. There we go. The third heavyweight title fight in just over a year in Birmingham, Alabama all because of one man in a dream, Deontay Wilder. 